Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. Respected legal analyst Jeremy Hogan, who has been following the SEC's legal struggle with Ripple closely, believes that it has come to an end. Today I'll break down the most recent developments in the prospective appeal of the SEC's recent actions, including probable timing. Also, let's dive into Bitcoin, XRP, and cryptocurrency market forecasts. Future developments as community sentiment remains divided will evaluate many factors currently influencing the crypto market, including Bitcoin and XRP pricing and a behind-the-scenes event that you may want to keep an eye on. Even if it doesn't have an immediate effect on the cost, it's still an important consideration. Before we get into the details, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of our viewers, tell you to hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on because we've got an exciting XRP giveaway lined up for you all, and ask you to please share the video if you find the content helpful. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can get down to business. Let's dive in, as both Bitcoin and XRP values have been on the rise recently, with Bitcoin having broken through the $30,000 barrier and remaining stable. There has been a dramatic increase in searches on Google and YouTube. Despite the difficulties involved, many people are interested in learning the insider strategies for trading Bitcoins. Now turning our attention back to the market, the recent spike in the price of Bitcoin has captured everyone's attention due to unconfirmed rumors that a Bitcoin ETF would soon receive approval. Bitcoin's value rose by several thousand dollars in a matter of minutes, around six of them. Some suspicious trading operations, such as a Bitcoin trade costing $50,000 that resulted in a spectacular profit of $2.2 million, drew attention during this quick increase. The person behind this deal has been linked to the tweet that triggered the price increase, which is a topic I won't get into here. Meanwhile, XRP's value peaked at 55 cents before retreating slightly, during the previous few months, it has traded in a tight range between 48 cents and 53 cents. This pattern of behavior first appeared around the time that Ripple won its legal battle with the SEC. While the outcome wasn't a complete victory, XRP was finally accepted as a non-security digital asset, as I'll explain in more detail in the next section. In all my years covering cryptocurrency, I've never seen a more contentious moment than the present one and that includes the time when Bitcoin's price soared beyond the $60,000 level. Will Bitcoin continue its ascent, or is a correction around the corner, Mark? I want to know what you think. If you have any thoughts on this, please share them here. I have been following a number of active day trading communities and their members. Though they aren't perfect, their projections over the past six months have been spot on. Many analysts believe Bitcoin's price might fall to the $18,000 to $20,000 region, which, if true, would allow investors to take advantage of the massive liquidity available at that level before the major bull phase in 2024. Despite widespread consensus that Bitcoin won't break the $20,000 threshold due to weak selling pressure and a lack of significant open interest, technical signs point in the opposite direction. In the course of conducting technical analysis For evidence that large open interest is not always necessary for a price drop intended to capture additional liquidity, one need only look at the Relative Strength Index RSI, which has been on a downward trend this year even while the value of Bitcoin has risen. This backlash became clear when Bitcoin set fresh highs in the $50,000 range, back when Bitcoin's price was in the $600 to $1,000 region. The RSI trend was a warning sign that a price drop was imminent, according to several analysts. The price of Bitcoin did fall, though it happened more slowly than anyone had predicted. Now, some market watchers say $20,000 is a realistic target before the end of the year. However, we don't see this happening overnight. The next stage holds some hope. It appears that a surge in mainstream interest could propel Bitcoin's value upwards after the anticipated dip, particularly as we head into 2024, and I've been keeping an eye on macroeconomists and even statements from SEC as Gary Gensler, who recently hinted at a possible shift in stance toward a spot Bitcoin ETF. Important positive trends have typically occurred around the time of the Bitcoin halving, which will occur in 2024. 
Considering what I've learned from reading, talking to other traders, and listening to famous macroeconomic experts. Expectations are generally set for the years 2024 and 2025. As watershed years for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry as a whole. There are, however, impending developments that must be considered. Should wait to learn more about the Ripple litigation until after this. There's one important distinction that must be made. Recently, Lynn Alden pointed up an unnoticed event involving the U.S. government and cryptocurrencies in response to a tweet by John Deakins on a possible spot Bitcoin ETF. While the creation of a spot Bitcoin ETF has the potential to substantially increase the price of Bitcoin, there is a lingering worry that certain rights may be compromised by the activities of the U.S. government. The government's attention on cryptocurrency mixers is a source of dispute, Regulators want to crack down on the practice, typically citing concerns like money laundering, but the difficulty lies in the practicality of policing such a broad terrain. Since it would be impossible for the government to keep track of all the mixer transactions and users, especially in a field that is inherently resistant to centralized control, it may resort to more targeted measures, such as fining or prosecuting certain individuals or businesses. As a result, crypto enthusiasts have warned that their liberties and anonymity may be threatened. Many people will still be watching the Ripple case in 2024, regardless of whether or not a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved in 2023. While it appears that much of the lawsuit has been resolved, the SEC is still investigating whether or not Ripple executives Brad Garlinhouse and Chris Larson broke any laws. But the SEC has now dropped their allegations against Chris and Brad. One popular explanation is that the SEC made this decision knowing it would likely lose in court. A settlement might net them additional money from Ripple, but there have been rumblings in the crypto world that the SEC's decision may have ulterior intentions. Recent speculation implies the SEC's withdrawal from certain sections of the Ripple case may have strategic aim adding to the impression that the SEC routinely acts with a determined strategy, especially in lengthy issues. The conventional wisdom holds that the SEC can speed up the appeal process for other portions of the case by giving up control of those aspects. But they aren't disputing that XRP is not a security, and that fact is still clear. Instead, they're trying to disprove a few of the wave's claims. Additional victories following Torres's ruling insightful thinker, Jeremy Hogan, recently gave his opinion on the matter. Despite critical hearings in the works that could determine verdicts as high as $770 million, he stressed that for all practical purposes, the Ripple vs. SEC saga is reaching a finish. Hogan thinks the time has come to stop obsessively tracking this case's developments. He predicted that no fresh information will be revealed in 2019 because there would be no trial. As a result, we should hear the court's verdict sometime in the coming year. Both Ripple and the SEC maintain their appeal rights, despite the possibility of a settlement prior to the judgment. The SEC has stated its intention to appeal, but how likely is it that it will be successful in doing so? Hogan cites available data to show that the SEC's rate of success on appeal is rather low, at 14.2%. He further argues that the SEC's chances of winning on appeal are low because Judge Torres' judgment is fact-heavy. If the SEC files an appeal next year and the appeals court rules in its favor by 2025, the case would be resolved. The consequences of Judge Torres' decision in the Ripple vs. SEC case have attracted a lot of attention and for good reason. Legal commentator Jeremy Hogan warns that the appeals procedure may not be as simple as some people think, because the case could be sent back to the trial judge for further clarification and rulings if the appellate court thinks it appropriate. This is especially true for the other XRP allocations, where the judge refrained from making any firm conclusions about the second and third parts of the Howey test, instead leaving such questions to the trial court. If the case is sent back for review, the judge could rule in favor of Ripple, the SEC, and the appellate court could reach an agreement on programmatic sales, and the matter would once again be sent back to trial. Judge Torres seems to be leaning toward Ripple's fair notice defense following these discussions. The case might be appealed again covering all the grounds discussed, but, in order for the SEC to finally prevail, 
a number of things must occur, including their refusal to settle. Despite the low odds of victory, 14%, go through additional hearings and, hopefully, appeal again. This doesn't take into consideration any extraneous variables, such as legislative actions or political shifts. After calculating the likelihood of an appeal, the cost of litigation, and the likelihood of continuing the lawsuit against Ripple beyond 2026, Jeremy Hogan hilariously concludes that the SEC only gives him a 2.367% probability of winning. He Justin Lee compares these possibilities to the New York Jets winning the Super Bowl, a humorous method to stress the improbability of the SEC's ultimate win while yet leaving room for the finalization of potential penalties. Many people may be watching Ripple till the Bitcoin case is resolved on April 20, 2020. Many people are waiting for the official resolution of this case, so please share your opinions and forecasts with us in the comments. Please keep in mind that I am not a certified financial planner and that the information offered here is meant solely for educational and amusement reasons. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.